Hello everybody, my name is KD316, and recently this CSL Elite I had broke for a little bit, so I had to send it over to Fanatec to get repaired. They did a great job, customer service is great, but in the meantime, I couldn't stop sim racing. So I decided to pull out my trusty old Thrustmaster T150, and man, going from the CSL Elite to the T150 stunk, <laughs> and I, I kind of hated it. So I decided to borrow a Thrustmaster T300 and a few wheel rims, decided to borrow it for a couple weeks just to see what it was like while I waited for my, uh, my Fantech wheel to come back because I still had my CSL Elite load cell pedals. I continued to use those, so this is a review of just the wheelbase itself, just the T300 wheelbase. Though I will say, because I had the T150, pedals are similar. Those pedals, they're serviceable for if you're just starting out, but I'm just gonna focus on the wheel itself. And so, let me start off by talking about how it drives, how it feels driving. Compared to the T150, the T300 RS felt so much better. In the T150, the force feedback felt mostly like it was just resistance, like something was pushing back on you. But for the T300 RS, it actually felt like I was feeling the details of the car. I was feeling the details of what was happening. And it felt like the wheel was actually interacting with the car, not just giving more resistance as we were turning, but instead could feel the tiny rumbles and the little details. Compared to the CSL Elite, because it's not trying to directly compete to the CSL, it isn't as good detail-wise, but the jump in quality is not as big as with the T150. Like, the T150 to the T300 is like this, but the T300 to the CSL Elite only felt like this to me. Like the CSL Elite has a lot more specific details. You can feel every little thing, every little jerk, and it really tosses you. While the T300 is a lot smoother, way less powerful. But for me, it didn't feel like that big of a loss. When I was using the T150, I really missed my CSL Elite. When I was using the T300, I was feeling like, you know what? If my CSL Elite never came back, I am really happy with this T300. It feels really good. I'm getting the details that I want to feel immersed. And that's the biggest thing really for a wheel. They'll tell you that pedals will give you speed, good pedals will give you speed, but a good wheel helps you with immersion. And the T300 does a great job with immersion, so much so that if that is your only upgrade, I think you'd be happy. It was super easy to set up and use, great for beginners and advanced players alike. If you want, you can tinker and use a bunch of different settings to hone it in to the way you want. But if you are a beginner and this is your first wheel, it's pretty much just plug and play with any game and it'll feel really good. Now on to the wheel rims. I of course had the standard wheel rim that comes with the T300 RS and I got the Ferrari F1 wheel rim and the Ferrari F599XX Evo wheel. The quick release system to replace wheel rims is not as quick as Fanatec at all. Fanatec, you can just take the wheel out, put it in basically. Here you have to turn this knob, you have to screw in the screw and it takes about 30 seconds to a minute to do. And if you do it wrong, it'll start to get loose during a race, which can be annoying. But once you learn how to do it right, it's a solid quick release system. The length of time did not bother me at all. If I wanted to race F1, then I was going to do that for a couple hours. I wasn't going to switch rims every five minutes. So I don't mind taking a minute or two to change wheel rims. As long as the method doing it is good and keeps it stable and while I did do it wrong once, after I figured out what the issue was, doing the quick release swap was not bothersome and my wheel stayed in place. And so the quick release, pretty decent, pretty decent. So starting with the standard wheel, it's pretty much the same one that I had on the 
T150. And this wheel, for me by far, had the best button placement, best ease of use in using the buttons to navigate menus and understanding what each button did. It's the standard PlayStation layout, super easy to understand. However, the wheel felt really small. When I was trying to do some oval racing, it felt really small and caused it to feel super sensitive on every turn. And that was primarily the reason why I wanted to get other wheel rims because it was just too small for me to use in a lot of things, for me to feel comfortable racing a lot of cars. However, I will say if that is your only wheel rim, even though it's not great at driving any car, it is solid for driving every car. You can drive an open wheeler because it's small and because it's round, you can drift, you can use it for ovals and you can use it for rally. However, for me, being so used to a larger wheel rim like this or being used to an F1 wheel rim, um, it was just tough to go back to a 28 millimeter wheel rim like that. And so I got these other ones. The Ferrari Evo wheel rim, initially, first feeling it felt really, really cheap and light. And even though it had Alcantara, it was not too impressive. It didn't feel very mature. It was cheap. It felt cheap. However, the size of it felt great. It was 30 millimeters and I really enjoyed that and liked it. it helped me drive and it felt less sensitive. But the button placement and the button labeling left a lot to be desired. The buttons felt far away and they weren't labeled anything. So you had to remember if you wanted to use your wheel to navigate menus, you had to remember what button did what. Of course, if you're just using mouse and keyboard to navigate menus, that won't be a problem. But if you're planning on using the wheel for your console, it could be a little tricky. However, if you're not using the buttons, just using it to drive, it's a nice solid 300 millimeter wheel, but that's about it. The final wheel rim I had was the F1 wheel and initial impressions for that were very impressed. Compared to the F1 eSport wheel from Fanatec, I liked it way more ergonomically wise. It felt really good to hold, felt really good to just turn. Something about its curvature is different from the way the Fanatec F1 wheels are and it was one I preferred and that's gonna definitely just be personal preference, but I like the shape of it better for driving a car. You should be aware though if you're buying this, most of the buttons are fake and in the photos they look good, but in person they look really fake and not impressive at all. However, there are still plenty of good working buttons and I especially like the rotary knobs my only issue is, I think it's an issue only a few people will have. I am a short guy and my hands are not big. So it was a stretch once again to hit the buttons and it did cramp up my hands a couple of times, but I don't imagine that being a problem for many people because they'll probably have bigger hands than me. It was also nice not feeling like I needed to use gloves because of the material of the wheel and sometimes you just don't want to use gloves. You just want to chill and drive. Overall though, those wheel rims all drove great on the road. None of them felt worse than the other driving wise, feeling wise, force feedback wise. And you really can't go wrong with any of them if you're picking a wheel rim for your wheelbase. And so final thoughts on the T300 RS is that it is a great purchase in my opinion. If you wanna upgrade from a T150, this is a huge upgrade. You will feel so much more immersed and really you can stick with it for the rest of your sim racing days until it breaks. The CSL Elite did not feel like a huge upgrade coming out of the T300 RS. And if I didn't have this CSL Elite, I would have been perfectly happy keeping the T300 because it's that good and Really, one of the biggest things is that it does have 
different options for wheel rims you can use. So that is also a big part of the immersion. Want to drive an open wheel car? Put an open wheel rim in. Want to drive a Ferrari? You can put the 599XX Evo wheel in. It's immersive, it won't make you slow, and it's a solid price point. And with those three things, the T300 RS definitely gets my recommendation. I hope this video helped you out, and if it did, please give it a like so I know. And I'm planning to do more product reviews, do more game reviews. So if you want to see more of that, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.